very good morning to you. This is Petri here on Talk TV, live from the Talk Radio studios. I'm here with you until four o'clock this morning. Um, and I want to know what you're doing for platy jubes. Isn't that awful? That is absolutely vile, in my view. That, of course, is a platinum jubilee. Um, there's this new cool nickname. I just think it sounds awful. And um, uh, Jeff has, has uh, tweeted about this and said, Platy jubes, give me strength. Talk proper English, please. It just sounds really childish, doesn't it? But anyway, what are you doing for platy jubes? <laughs> I don't even think I can say it without any uh, with a straight face. Uh, do let me know. Uh, I'd like to because it would lighten up some of the conversations that we've been having, which of course have been been very serious and and absolutely right that we should have them. Um, and we've been talking about uh, the Depp Heard trial and the fact that Johnny Depp has won this defamation trial. Uh, a lot of women's groups are coming forward and saying this is a bad day for women. This is this means that domestic violence. Um, that uh, women will be afraid to come forward now uh, for fear of being believed. They've always been, there's always been a doubt. Um, but now it'll be worse because they might even be sued for defamation. So they're saying this is a bad day for women. Although on the other hand, of course, it is good news for men that sometimes that they will now be believed in terms of domestic abuse. And I, I, I accept that overwhelmingly the numbers are that men abuse women more and they are more violent and they are more likely to kill their partner. I completely understand that. But it is interesting to hear from you uh, this morning and we will address your calls and texts, um, which have been ph absolutely phenomenal this morning. So thank you um, uh, as we go through the programme. So do pick up the phone. You, you will get a sympathetic ear uh, and I'd like to hear your story. Uh, 0344 499 1,000. You can uh, text as well, as many of you have been, talk and your message to 8722. But for now, uh, my guest, I'm absolutely thrilled about this, Hattie Hassan, uh, MBE, uh, a plumber and founder of, I think, the best named plumbing company I've ever heard. Uh, it's called Stopcox Women Plumbers. Um, <clears throat> And I'm delighted to welcome her now. Hattie, good morning. Good morning, Petrie. What an amazing name <laughs> for a plumbing... I mean, seriously, I've, on so many levels, that works. Um, and a very good morning to you. Now, we've just been talking about abuse. We've been talking about domestic abuse. But you grew up in a, in a domestic home, didn't you, With your when your father was the abuser. Tell me a bit about that. Um, there were five of us, and we are Turkey Cypriot. Um, we, my parents moved over here. They were very young uh, when they married, and they moved over in the 59. I think it was 59, or 58 they moved in. My brother was born in 59. I was born in 61. And um, um, then they went on to have three others. Uh, now, being kind of... Um, Obviously, I grew up with him, I, uh, and he was abusive. He was a drinker, um, a gambler. Uh, obviously, he had a lot of pressures being a father of five children, not saying that, you know, he got everything right. He got lots of things wrong. Um, and luckily for the love of our mother, that we uh, all, none of us turned out to be drug addicts or, yeah, <laughs> you know, criminals or in prison. We all managed to to survive and you know the, that's really a testimony to the resilience of my mum um, and uh, her love for us. I mean she did eventually leave him but she only left him after all five of us had grown up and moved moved out. I mean what an incredible woman because she would have known perhaps that she couldn't have supported you financially or put the roof over your head uh, and so she waited until you'd all grown up and moved out. Yeah, she did, and and also um, she was. He would also always say to her, "You can't tell anybody because they'll come and take your children away." And you know, not knowing the laws of the land. Of course, uh, I was just about to say that this whole situation, of course, probably made worse by the isolation your mother felt. Exactly. Uh, by yeah, being in a foreign country. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, there's there's isolation. I mean, a lot of. Um, uh, abusers like to uh, isolate 
yes. the, the one they're abusing. Yeah, whether that be emotionally or, or, or actually. Um, yeah. So uh, d tell me about when tradesmen used to appear uh, at, at your house, because that was a very interesting part of your story. Yeah, well, whenever, um, whenever any man, but particularly tradesmen, because they're in your home and they're there for, you know, quite a few hours, sometimes a few days, if they were doing something larger, if they, if they came and worked in the house, and, you know, obviously, we, I was very interested anyway, because I was, I was, you know, I, I really wanted to know how things work. So I was always like, watching over and interested in all that thing. I, I didn't know that I was going to become a tradeswoman myself at the time. But I was interested in how things were built and how things were done. And I always took things apart. And my mum's just a really nice person. So she'd offer the geezer a cup of tea or, you know, or, or something just being yeah, civil. And um, uh, so we'd have the work done. My dad would often joke with the guy and, you know, conversation and all of this. And then as soon as he left, we'd be left with, you know, you were looking at him. You were saying this, you were doing that. And my mum would be like, no, I made him a cup of tea. Mm. <laughs> and so then, you know, chairs would be broken over our heads and all sorts. I mean, it was a, it was really quite, quite bad. And that, it, did that um, feed into why you started the, the business that you started? Um, yeah, I think it did. I mean, uh, you're talking about the Register of Trades with Yes, I am, yeah. I think we'll talk about that later. But, but yeah, that, that's, as a, that's a direct, um, directly from my own past and my own experience. So you then decided to train to become a plumber. I yeah. wish I'd done that. <laughs> well, do you know what? Do you know, you're amongst about 20-odd percent of women who said... If yeah. they had their time again, they wish they had gone into a trade. I mean, honestly, so. I, I'm absolutely brilliant. I'm always completely thrilled when I get a, a female cab driver, let alone, you know, there was one time I had a female gas engineer. I nearly fainted with joy because yeah. I was so shocked. And then it occurred to me, why am I shocked? Why aren't <laughs> there more women in the trades? Yes, this is a question we ask ourselves all the time, every day, and and um, and uh, yeah. So so I started the registered trades. I I I just I when I became a plumber, it, I didn't think, oh, I'm a woman and I want to be a plumber. I just thought I want to leave teaching, and I want to be self-employed, and I want to do something with my hands, and I want love... to earn a lot of money. Do you know it wasn't even the money? It wasn't the money. <laughs> It wasn't the money either. Right, it was just that you know. I wanted to. I wanted to. I didn't know how much plumbers earned, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to be in charge of my own destiny. I wanted to empower myself, I yeah. suppose. And uh, when I think about it now, and the the reasons behind the registered tradeswomen, I we I coined a phrase recently called "fix yourself by fixing things," nice. and I think I might have done that. Yeah. So you so, just you, you know, found yeah. you found a way. I mean, uh, I've I've always um, I, electricians and plumbers, that's just like magic to me. It's like ooh, so I, you know, because I just don't understand how you understand what you understand. But uh, it's because you study, of course, and you, you you know these things. But I mean, I had an electrician come around to my house the other day, and I was in the hallway. I hadn't even taken him anywhere else. And I said, "Oh, we've got I've got some sockets fusing." He said, "Oh, that'll be something that's happening in your garden." I said, "How do you know you've got a garden?" He went, "Because it will be something happening in it." And it was. And I thought, well, that's just freaky. <laughs> that's just weird. So, you know, that's magic. Um, so I'm in awe of tradespeople. I always have been because I genuinely believe um, you see a bricklayer working. Extraordinary. It's, it's a fascinating thing to watch somebody who's clever like that. Um, and and uh, I have nothing but respect for it. Um, and I just wonder why more people don't go into it because there's this drive for university. But actually, a trade is going to earn you more and probably yeah. more fun. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, if you're in a job, you're in a job. Yeah. And But if you're self-employed, then you can control your own hours. And that's why I, I went to... So, I, well, I tried to get a job, to be honest, and nobody would employ me. Oh. Nobody, nobody. Not a single 
person, not a single, I couldn't get an apprenticeship. I couldn't get, um, I couldn't get anybody to even take me out for free. Wow. So I just thought, well, I've got to, if no one else will employ me, I'll employ myself. <laughs> That's what I did. It's the way to do it, isn't it? And how difficult was it to be taken seriously when you, you know, you turn up at... I mean, your 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 company, um, uh, uh, Stopcocks, <laughs> Women yeah. Plumbers, um, it, uh, you know, did it take a while before people trusted a woman with plumbing? Absolutely. The complete opposite. Wow. Um, I immediately, I started to... Um, now, let's just bear in mind the timing of this. This was in 1990. Right, OK. There was no internet. There was no... There was hardly any mobile phones um, and, yeah. and all of that. So I, when I started... So I had to print my own um, flyers, yeah. which, because I was a primary school teacher, I knew how to make materials. So I made some flyers and I walked walk the streets and posted them in people's wow. doors. And I was a novelty and I still am a novelty. You know, I've been in it 30 years and I'm still a novelty. Um, and um, and as soon as people saw my flyers, two weeks, the phone started ringing. Wow. Within two weeks, the phone started ringing. And as soon as I went in and did some work, now I didn't know what people's experiences were with tradesmen. They told me. And that's how I started collecting stories about the difference between me and yeah. others. And um, and so, uh, as soon as they'd had me in their homes, they'd say to me, oh, my God, you know, you said you'd be here at 2 o'clock and here you are, it's 2 o'clock. And I'd be thinking, <laughs> well, that's odd. But isn't that normal? Wow. <laughs> if you say you're going to, you know, isn't it normal to sweep up yeah. if you make a mess? I'm, I'm just confused about this. And this is what it was like back then. But then having been in one house... I pretty much owned the street because they'd tell their neighbours and they'd tell their friends, they'd tell their families. I, I stopped advertising after five years. Wow. That's how busy tradeswomen are. That's how much in demand we are and that's how much we still are in demand. So with this, this register of tradeswomen, I, I've, I mm. have never heard of it and I would definitely, and this is going to make me sound really sexist, but I would definitely use women. Uh, I don't know, I, don't, I think I would just trust a woman in my home if I'm in there on my own. That's not to say that I think all men are bad because I absolutely don't. Um, but it, it's a very, it's, it's very hard to find a tradesperson that you trust. Um, and once you've found them, you don't let them go. And that's clearly what's that's happened true. to you. So with your register of tradeswomen, why have I not heard of it? Why do I not know about it? Well, um, when the when we got locked down in the um, in March 2020, and the stories of, as you mentioned earlier, the numbers of women being killed, that that number went crazy because women were now locked in with their abuser, with their abusers, yeah. and unfortunately their killers, um, in a lot of cases. And I uh, spoke to my mum and I said, "Look, mum, I think I I want to." talk about the fact that I came from an abusive background and how would you feel about it because there's something we can do here you know um, a TV presenter had also just come out as, as being uh, running away from an abusive situation and I just thought people need to know that it isn't a rare thing mm. that it happens a lot more than you think and so I spoke to my mum and she was the one who actually reminded me and said to me, you know, all those times when we used to have work. Wow. You know, if it had been a woman, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And we've been, for years, we've been being contacted by organisations like Refuge, Women's Aid. At the minute, we're working with an entire national network of organisations that work with abused women, um, at begging us to, you know, see if we can find them an electrician can you find us a, a plasterer can you find us a brickie can you find us a you know a plumbers not only plumbers but all of the trades and so i thought you know i can i can do this so we started a crowd fund in july i think it was around between july and august of 2020 wow. to raise money to start to collate this list this register 
and we start we we launched that in October. So between October and March, we collected the names of all the tradeswomen that we could find, and we started to verify them in terms of finding out what their qualifications are, getting some ID, creating ID badges so that 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 not only them but the customers felt safe all sorts of things putting safeguards in in place for not only the customers but also for the tradeswomen um uh, and all of that and then in march 2021 we launched to the public and that's why you haven't heard of it wow because uh, i'm in, so uh, uh, impressed by this this is absolutely brilliant and there will be a lot of reason that want to you that that, that that people want to use women aside from uh, protecting themselves from uh, yeah. domestic violence uh, and and it's an absolutely genius genius idea so where do we find this do we just literally just search engine search engine it uh yeah you, yeah we've got a website we're register of tradeswomen.com I'm not writing this down for my because I've just moved home and I need some work doing. <laughs> I promise you. Yeah. Uh, no, Tradeswomen.com. Re register of tradeswomen.com. Yeah. Register. Yeah. Register. You'll be hearing from me. Uh, register. Are, uh, can I tell you about uh, so a little bit? We're a not for profit. Right. Um, and the reason why we set up as a not for profit is because of my background and my experience and my working with these uh, organisations of abused women. And it was so that um, we want to set up a pot of money so that um, we can en uh, enable and empower women to access funds to train in trades. Because we there are, there are many things going on at the minute. Um, there's a massive skills gap. There is a huge, huge shortage. This is why yeah. you can't find anyone to come and do work yeah. for you. Our trade, we've discovered in our year of running, we've been running since March 2021. So in March 2022, we did a collation of all the things, the numbers of um, requests we've had and the numbers we were able to actually fulfil. And we we discovered that we could only fulfil a third of our wow. requests. Now, I tell you what, listen, uh, listen, Hattie, I, I, I'd like to talk to you again at some point actually let's do a let's do a, a bit of uh, of this again uh, and maybe if you can come into the studio and we can talk to women and see about getting them more interested in trades would you be interested in doing that i would brilliant we're going to do it uh, hattie hassan thank you so much absolutely brilliant i'm in awe of you register of tradeswomen.com why aren't there more women in the trades we'll find out we'll get hattie back and you'll be able to ask her lots of questions as well um so thank you very much indeed and of course hattie at, at stopcox.uk as well